Ashe County, North Carolina, Deputy Jake Howell is speeding toward a dangerous scene. It's a domestic disturbance call. He's a guy that's familiar to us. We've had a lot of calls with him in the past. Going into these type of calls, you just kind of got to be prepared for everything. It can lead into something very dangerous and treacherous for everybody involved. We're actually here right now. Sergeant Aaron Reed is already on the scene. He is speaking with a man who is noticeably under the influence. I don't want that woman to punch me in the mouth. I don't want my family. Okay, where are they? And they hate people that beat on me in this room. I just want to leave. All right, come on down here. I just want to leave. Okay, that's what we're doing. Let's go down here and have to We'll figure it out. Hold on just a minute. There you go. He's lit. With the ranting man detained in the patrol car, the officers turn their attention to the relative he accused of hitting him. She denies it ever happened. I have not laid one hand on him. You believe? Yeah. Why your hand? hand. He grabbed me by the hand and he twisted my hand. So I'm just gonna take him in on the assault then. Mm. Chris, there and put your hands right behind your back, okay? Okay. Her hands tore up. As you twisted her hand, so we got to take you to jail, okay? No. Come on, come on. Have a seat. You do something wrong. Have a seat, Chris. Are you good? No. Chris. You know you're doing it wrong. Listen, Chris. No. You can put your foot in. No. No, you hurt me. When you're wrong. Chris. Chris, don't do that. You hit me in your foot, we'll have problems. Put your feet in. We're going to have to talk to you. Slide the other foot over. There you go. Hopefully he'll sober up and calm down. Usually once he's sober and calm, it's pretty easy to get along with. 1017 County Jail, what mail? 1072. Come on, Chris. You are a liar. He ain't nothing but liars. Who am I? Who believe in one thing? Hey, my God. Under the care of the Ash County Jail staff, the man will be able to calm down and sober up without injuring himself or others. 80% of the inmates in Ash are there because of crimes that are drug or alcohol related. Meanwhile, two hours away, the jail in Sullivan County, Tennessee, is also crowded with drug and alcohol offenders. Deputy Burke Murray has spent years combating drug trafficking in the region and has identified a house that dealers and users are known to frequent. That house is famously known among the drug heads and drug dealers as Miss Judy's. The deputy has answered several calls at the house and knows that the homeowner has made it available as a crash pad for criminals. She seems like a sweet little old lady, but she has some of the roughest people you can imagine in her house. Is there a reason you're hiding people out? I'm not hiding people. The facts prove otherwise, which is why Murray will be staking out the residence. The deputy is targeting two suspects involved in the drug game. The lady that we have warrants on and the guy with her is supposed to be driving a white work van, and there's a white work van parked there at Miss Judy's now. So I'm gonna sit up right in here, see if we might get lucky enough to 
See that thing come out. At least one of the suspects is believed to have ties to cocaine, marijuana, and the synthetic drug known on the streets as gravel. We've been kind of cold trailing these two for a while. Maybe we'll get lucky enough to see this van leave. While Deputy Murray waits for the suspects to leave the house, in another part of the county, Deputy Roger Antone is on the move to a drug-related case of his own. I'm going to back up Deputy Boyd. The car came out as a suspicious vehicle. He's got the vehicle stopped. Uh, I'm guessing he's probably going to need a vehicle sniff to see if there's any uh, known narcotics in the vehicle. Antone and his partner, Deputy Nico, arrive on scene and meet up with lead officer, Deputy Michael Boyd. Come on, buddy. What we got going on? What we got? He's revoked. Right now, we'll deploy K-9 Nico and see if we can get an exterior sniff of the vehicle. Don't seek. Nico has been specially trained to sniff out meth, heroin, marijuana, cocaine, and ecstasy. Nico didn't show uh, any distinct change of behaviors. Is that your vehicle? Yes, sir. Okay. You got anything in that vehicle we should know about, brother? Be honest with me, man. No, there's nothing. There's nothing in there? Are you on drugs or anything like that, sir? No. What's the deal with the Kleenex up your nose? What is what 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 is what's the cotton ball for? My nose started because I my nose started bleeding earlier at work. Did it? Let's see. Put your head back for me. You've been snorting this evening, man. Don't lie to me, because I see some white residue up there. No. All right, brother. He's got powder up his nose. All right, let's go ahead and search it, okay. is coming up clean. Then, Deputy Boyd notices something unusual. I didn't check yeah, I didn't see it. Yeah. You're way to have a man down there. Yeah. Or is it just stiff? Probably just stiff, but we can cut it open. Take that out. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Let's see. Some He's got powder up his nose. Oh, right, let's go ahead and search it. Okay. Officers in Sullivan County, Tennessee, have detained a man they suspect is under the influence of drugs. Now, they go in search of his stash. Yeah, a little bit. Just a little bit of white powder. Well, the wind's blowing it, but right around in this area. Man, people are clever these days, I'm telling you. What was in here, my man? I don't know, mixed with Lord Tab 10. Okay. Tylenol mixed with Lord Tab 10? Okay. Lord Tab is a highly addictive narcotic used to relieve pain. Is that your problem right now, is pills, brother? My, my shoulder was hurting. Uh huh. How much have you snorted of that? How much of that have you snorted? That was only maybe a quarter of it left. Yeah. Okay. You said you had a shoulder injury. Is that what the reason why you're doing it? You ain't done any math here lately? Weed, anything like cocaine or anything like that? No hard drugs? Okay. It was pharmacy uh, drugs that he has. He uses it for a shoulder injury. Uh, claim he hasn't been on any hard drugs here lately. Please look at, look up here. I ain't charging you with it, okay? I'm charging you driving on the road, okay? All right. 
The wrap-up is he's going to jail for driving on revoked license. I only like to work. <laughs> Ain't that right, Nico? Lout. <laughs> One more drug user off the road. But in another part of the county, the drug war continues. Officers launch what could be a major drug bust. Authorities have uncovered evidence of a possible meth lab at a woman's trailer. Vice Detective Ray Hayes, have you already looked at it? who is specially trained to identify active meth labs, is called to the scene. He arrives as an EMT talks to the resident who claims she has no knowledge of a meth lab on the property. I'm with EMS, okay? Here's what we want to do. All right, you ain't gonna like it. We want to decon you. Which means I'm gonna take all your clothes, wash you down in water, because you're contaminated, okay? You gotta you get up and do this. There's no if, ands, or buts. You gotta get up. You can't take that. It's contaminated. Everything on you is contaminated. Before your safety. Water's gonna be cold. It's coming off fire truck. You're gonna be naked, but I'm trying to keep the price of the best I can. While the occupant is being decontaminated, Detective Hayes investigates the property. I'm looking for anything meth related, anything we can say is used for meth. All right, I got fuel. So I'm gonna set this stuff off to the side. This is what found in the house. But right there is what you've been looking for. This has actually got one pot cooks. We got gassers. We got all kinds of the ingredients, stuff that really shows from a meth lab. This is pretty much everything you need. Fuel, liquid drain opener. This is gonna be your lithium batteries. What makes this so dangerous? Just a little bit of agitation, a little bit of moisture gets on that lithium, catches fire, you got a fireball. The dangers are significant, not only for the people who make the drug, but for those who investigate them as well. Ooh, that's gassing. It's hydrogen chloride gas, so when hydrogen chloride gas hits water, it becomes hydrogen chloride acid. Your body's 75% water, so you get some hydrogen chloride gas in your eyes, in your lungs, in your mouth, in your throat. It's very dangerous. We've had people get hurt that are just innocent. They don't, didn't even know it was a meth lab. It's a real danger in this area that we deal with. In fact, over the past several years, Tennessee has ranked among the highest in the nation in meth-related incidents. With the meth-making materials cleared, a truck from the Tennessee Meth Task Force arrives on scene. It's got all the equipment and chemicals we need to neutralize all this. Get it neutralized and out of here for safety of the public. I mean, it's great to get these busts, but the main thing is getting out here and protecting the citizens that we work for. Their safety is more important than us busting 20 or 30 labs as long as we keep them safe. This is, this is more to protect the public than anything. While officers are cleaning up in Sullivan County, over in Ash County, the change in the weather is not going to make Deputy Chris Roten's shift any easier. Roten investigates a neighbor's complaint about loud music. He'll determine if this is one of those parties fueled by alcohol. So I'm not sure what we're fixing to get into here with conditions on the road right now. Never know what you're gonna get. Driving deep into the woods on a rough dirt road, a wrong turn can lead to a whole lot of trouble. Let's find a spot to turn around. We'll go back down the road here a little ways. What's going on here? And we may be stuck here. Oh, this is lovely. Great. Deputy Roten isn't going anywhere fast. His partner, Deputy James McNeil, arrives to help. I'm stuck. Big time. I don't know if I'll make it out of here or not. Good gosh, I think I'm gonna call for the tow truck. Now, Deputy Roten makes the call he's been dreading. 125, Ken. 
Also, if you could contact the next 1051. 1014 County, I'm just uh, stuck in some mud. <laughs> I'm getting a kick out of that, ain't I? Sometimes the deputy's biggest obstacle in reaching a call is just plain mud. I just know that uh, after this, I will not hear the end of this. Back in Sullivan County, Deputy Burke Murray continues to stake out an alleged drug house. That house is famously known among the drug heads and drug dealers as Miss Judy's. Murray waits for suspects with outstanding warrants to leave the house in their white van. And there comes the van. Most people coming out of uh, Miss Judy's house, they're usually intoxicated, either on drugs or alcohol. It can be volatile and dangerous to the officers. In 27, that uh, North Bell 26. What's unpredictable about those situations is the uh, person we're going to make contact that he could be violent and can be dangerous. I'll take a shot, see. So you have to approach with caution as much as you can. Try not to get caught off guard. Stay in your car. Sullivan County Deputy Burke Murray has been chasing a van that left an alleged drug house. He suspects the people he's after are inside the vehicle. You have to approach with caution as much as you can. Try not to get caught off guard. See driver's license, please. Where you been tonight? I've been over on Gang Street down here. Yeah, whose house is that? Judy something, I just had to take up your time. What was you doing for her? I do eat that work. Oh, oh, was you working I, on hers? Yeah, I had to fix your time on it. Oh, okay. Now, was there any other people there at her house? No, I didn't see nobody. I went back back to Oh, she's talking to her? Was she there? Yeah, she's the only one sitting there. She's the only one there? All right, sit tight. Let me check your license. I'll be right back. Ah, struck out there. Well, it's not who we're looking for, but they were supposed to be in that van. Usually the first uh, thing they tell is something different about where they were to distance herself from that house. Leads me to believe he's not involved in the drug game. But a check of the driver's license reveals crimes of a different sort. Revoked. Fair to file owner operator report. Fair to comply with financial responsibility. Hmm. Well, interesting. He's revoked. We'll let him get him a ride, get somebody to drive his van, and charge him with driving on revoked, or release him on a citation. So you got somebody that can come get you. Because yeah. your license is revoked. And we'll give you a citation for driving on revoked. This is gonna be a citation for driving on revoked, okay? Yeah, get it all straightened out, and I gotta keep your license. You can't have this license while you're revoked. So you while Deputy Murray issues the driver a citation, he continues probing for intel on the two suspects. There wasn't anybody else out at Miss Judy's that she was working at? No, she Didn't see nobody? She's the only one I seen, but I don't know if anybody's in the back. I just seen the base since I was in. Yeah. All right, have a good evening. That was a swing and not a complete miss. Maybe we got a base hit out of that one. He was up front about where he was coming from. Most people that are involved in buying dope or selling dope, they'll tell you they're coming from somewhere else and they won't mention that house at all. So led me to believe that he wasn't, uh, wasn't being dishonest. And we'll go back and watch and see if we'll get something better next time. While Deputy Murray continues his search for suspects, across the county, Officers have pulled over another suspicious vehicle. The driver is believed to be intoxicated. I want you to follow the tip of my finger with your eyes and your eyes open. Okay. Go ahead and put one foot in front of the other foot, heel to toe. Oh, wait, wait, what? Uh, 
Put, put your other hand behind your back, girl. Okay. Uh, put your hand behind your back. Put your other hand behind your back. No, but it's, it's hurt. Okay, okay. We won't, we're just going to the sheriff's department, okay? Okay. But you're under arrest for driving under their influence of alcohol. Right here. Here. <laughs> All right. Well, it's good to be honest. So you've been drinking and smoking? There's a pop. No. All right. Here's a pop. <laughs> you want us to tow your car? You want somebody to come pick it up for you? <laughs> tow it. Our dispatch said they had several calls from different people uh, about the way he was driving and their concern that he was possibly under the influence and come find out he was. That's drugs off the street and an impaired driver off the road. All right, let's roll. A new day dawns back in Ash County. Deputy Kevin Rourke responds to a disturbing report. A woman's body has been found inside her home. First responders are on scene. They ask for law enforcement to come for an investigation. 122 County, both units 1023, water tank building. With no witnesses present, the woman's death is shrouded in mystery. Come on, fellas. First step is to make sure that there's no foul play involved. What do you got? The 85-year-old female said she's been having some chest pain last couple weeks. Wouldn't go to the doctor. Who found her? Her neighbor or her family, I'm not sure which. Okay. I think she's not showing up for She's just one of them old people. And you actually talked to her about 5 o'clock yesterday? Uh, a little before 5. She called me. She seemed to be doing fine. But she said her chest was hurt. But it had been a hurt. I said, I said, I'll take the ambulance come get you anyway. She said, you take the I won't go. She just wouldn't go. Okay. Went into the residence just to confirm the ID. No foul play suspected at this time. Secure the monies, checks, credit cards, stuff like that. Okay. Okay, I understand. For the victim's family, it's a relief that there was no foul play. A tragedy nonetheless. Meanwhile, across the mountains in Sullivan County, a troubling call comes into the radio dispatch center. 33, Can you check the area for a male, possibly ADD? I was sitting on the caller's porch. Takes decision. Tampa. We had uh, Andrew Israel say that his grandson was outside, stating that he sees like to swap people around him, different people in the house on the field. Based upon the report, Deputy Richard Lingerfeld suspects that drugs may be involved. Bath and bath sauce both is bad. I mean, they hallucinate on it. You hear paranoid. Lingerfeld races to the family's home before the young man injures his grandparents or himself. Sheriff's office. I got them once dead up there. You got them going to come off of some Hey, calm down. In Sullivan County, Tennessee, Deputy Richard Lingerfeld responds to a report from a terrified resident that his grandson is having delusions and behaving erratically. Sheriff's office. I got them once dead up there. You got them going to come off of some Hey, calm down. Hey. I ain't trying to get you upset. Uh, I'm here to help you, not to hurt you. Your grandpa was worried about you. So he was going off and stuff, and you're kind of confused. Deputy Dustin Joyner provides backup. I'm not talking about 
You ain't took any bath sauce or anything, have you? No. You ain't took no meth or nothing, right? Yeah. Honest, I mean, be honest with you, Chris. Yeah, I did something yesterday. Hey, calm down. I, I tell you what, I hope you God. I hope you pray to God, man. I am tripping. We're going to get you some help. EMS arrives to take the young man to the hospital. First time doing it? He did admit to doing the drugs. Once he realized that it could be just the drugs, he was more willing to cooperate and get the help he needed. The grandparents get to rest easy today without fear. Go home happy. As one situation cools down in Sullivan, Across the county, things are about to get real hot. Little Valley Road, it's calling the and a male subject is in a yard causing problems. There should be a female with him also causing problems. I've been right to back. Ladies called in and said that there's a, an unknown male and an unknown female in her yard. All we know at this point is that. Somebody is uh, trespassing on her property, and uh, she believes them to be drunk. Deputy Nathan Lane was first to come upon a very surprising scene. Well, I was coming down the road here. I, I spotted them. They were attempting to make love right here in the gravel driveway. After an unsuccessful attempt to physically express their love in a neighbor's driveway, the couple has retreated back to their residence. I've never pulled up on two people doing that. When they saw me turn the lights on, they kind of got up and she pulled the pants back up and stumbled on down back to the road. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if that was her stomach or his leg. I, you know, I was all confused. She like sitting on top of me. No, he was on top of her, and then she rolled sideways, couldn't get up, I had to help her up. What are we doing here? Boy, I tell you what, you've been drinking something good, haven't you? A little bit. It's good loving. Y'all were starting to love in the driveway. I don't know. Uh, I guess your friend didn't want you scrogging in her yard over there. You drunk, stay in the house, OK? Yeah. It's a lot better indoors anyways, what I hear. Right. All right. <laughs> hey, we'll see y'all later. <sighs> Let's go. Go on inside and shut the door so we don't have to come back. All right. See you, bye. Those folks are from the highly intoxicated. They're back in their residence. Wow. Takes all kinds. What's that commercial? When the time is right, do not pause to take a peek. <laughs> Back in Ash County, Deputy Jeremy Monday addresses another issue that has ravaged the region, failed child support. The guy, he's got a child support warrant out on him right now, and we're going to go see if he's home. He has a back payment of $5,000. That shows you how much he's not paid. And if you're going to have kids, take care of them. And if you can't take care of them, don't have them. If you're man enough to go inside a woman, the least you can do is be man enough to take care of what comes out. Child support here in Ash, it's a big thing. We do quite a bit of it. And a lot of the ones that we deal with, people's having hard times or drug problems or stuff like that. Hey, how are you? Is it Kevin here? Yeah. Okay, you care for he comes out here or? What do you want? I got a paper for him. Oh. You'll come in. Okay. He's dead days Oh, he's in the basement. Hey, Kevin, Sheriff's Department. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, we just got child support. Got a failure to pay. Oh, so I have to. Yeah, we'll have to, I'll have to take you to the NC magistrate. 
You work a night shift or something, or? You know, we're working on a job. Oh, don't have a job? Oh, okay. Yeah, they're tough right now. But child support isn't Kevin's only problem. I'll have to see the nurse because I'm an alcoholic. I'll, I'll go into seizures. Okay. Alcoholics typically go through withdrawal when they stop drinking cold turkey. Uh -huh. We don't want to see him die either. We don't know what yeah. else to do. Yeah. This might be kind of a good thing for him. Nobody wants to see their kid go to jail or anything, but a lot of times it, you know they're safe. an alcoholic for years. I lost my job and I owe child support. That's why I'm here right now. I have to have a beer within 30 minutes of waking up or else I go into DTs. I keep drinking until usually late into the night, every day, all day. <laughs> I always kept a half gallon of Jim Beam underneath the kitchen counter. I walked in one day and I thought it was talking to me telling me to come drink me. Kevin will detox in jail and hopefully enter into a rehab program to help turn his life around. As night falls over Sullivan County, Deputy Burke Murray resumes his search for known drug dealers and users. We'll go over and go by Miss Judy, see if there's any traffic there. Tonight, Murray is joined by Deputy Roger Antone. Oh, oh. Russell's truck's over here. The guy's got a little black pickup truck. That's somebody we're looking for. Antone was looking for that the other night. 345, 354. 354. Where that uh, black vehicle we talked about over on Cranshaw right now? 10 4. Some of the normal drug dealers that we've been watching here lately has been using that pickup truck. We'll get in the hall. Dark place to sit, maybe. Let's see if we see it come back out. Now, we just sit and wait. So we're sitting a couple streets away. Officer Antone's on the other side. Once we get the word the vehicle's leaving, then it's gonna come out by one of us. Gonna wait on them. They're never punctual people. But this night, they're more punctual than usual. 354. Well, there's our little black truck. Just came out. A three or four thousand pound car being driven by an intoxicated person is just as dangerous as them having a gun. Put your hands up. Step out. Well, there's our little black truck. Just came out. Deputy Burke Murray and his team are pursuing a vehicle they saw leaving an alleged drug house. Murray suspects it's being driven by a local drug dealer. Put your hands up. Step out. We're done. Get out of here. Put your hands on the truck. You got any weapons on you? Knives, guns, anything? Huh? You sure? What was you concealing in your pants there while you was driving behind you? What have you been doing tonight? Take any medications? You sure? Let's see your license. Where are you coming from tonight? Oh, what have you been doing over there? Oh. He's acting kind of suspicious. Thought he was concealing stuff. We'll just check and see if his license is valid. First 26, it turns out it's valid, no gun permit, no restriction, and he's clear. Yeah, Temple. Well, see if we can get any information out of him and cut him loose. I've talked to you a couple of times, Anthony. You're always in the wrong place at the wrong time, you know? Always hanging out with the wrong people. Any dope in your truck? Any drug, paraphernalia, anything? You got something in there? What kind you got? Just a pipe. Let me see it. 
Where there's a pipe, Deputy Roger Antone suspects there may also be drugs. Baggy. How much you got? No. Oh. Fake stuff. Did you get it ripped off? This here right here. What's in it? What's the fake version of gravel, man? For what? Give him a misdemeanor citation for that simple possession, just paraphernalia possession. While Deputy Antone cites the driver for possession, Deputy Murray questions the truck's passenger. He knows her and asks about suspects hiding out at the alleged drug house. You're back on the stuff, ain't you? I'm just tired. I really am. I swear I'm just tired. Why in the world are you at Judy's if you ain't doing dope? You're on something. You got a baby to deal with. You out here running around doing the same stuff again. You're with the same group of people. Not good. Who else is out there at Judy's? Mike who? Big Mike. Were they staying there or leaving? This is the break Murray has been waiting for. A fugitive drug dealer may be holed up inside the safe house. So doing a little more digging of who else is supposed to be at the house. Supposed to be another guy that we've, we've got a warrant on. Big Mike, almost 1230 in the night, so maybe we'll catch him off guard when they're bedded down. Murray and his team race to apprehend the fugitive. Meanwhile, over in Ash, it's another evening of pelting rain. Deputy Chris Roten is back out on the streets and heading right into a storm. We're headed up the road here just a little ways to a prowler call. Sounds like somebody is out snooping around someone else's home. If do make contact with anyone, first thing I will do is make sure they don't have any weapons on them. 27 can be 1023. 27 Hello. How are you? Okay. Okay, so I think we're trying to like check on that window over there. I heard him walking on the porch. This one? Yeah. I thought that's where I was coming from, but I don't know. Okay. It's just me and the baby here, and I was afraid someone was coming well, That's okay. That's what we're here for. Okay. That's what we're here for. In Ash County, Deputy Chris Roden braves the rain to search for a prowler at the home of a frightened woman and her baby. <laughs> On the porch behind the house, Roden discovers what may be evidence of an intruder. Well, that uh, trash on your back porch, the trash bags, how long have they been on there? Uh, a couple days. A couple days? Yeah. If you want to go in your house and meet me on the back porch, I'll show you back here what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay, you see right there? So th this time of year, it's starting to turn into winter. Yeah. Might be some sort of animal looking for some food. <laughs> okay. So... That's better than a person. Yeah, a lot better. If you hear anything else that concerns you, give us a call back. All right, have a good one. Fortunately, this intruder turned out to be more hungry than heinous. Back in Sullivan County, Deputy Burke Murray is closing in on an alleged drug dealer 
who may be hiding out in a known safe house. I don't have any confidence that the lady will let us in, knowing that he's in there with a warrant or with dope. She'll usually let us in when there's not anything going on, but there's somebody in there hiding, she refused to let us in. Just uh, all in how smooth I talk. Murray's ploy for gaining entry? He'll ask the owner about a different fugitive instead of the man he's looking for tonight. Yeah, it's just kind of keep an eye on the fact. I don't think they're gonna suspect we're looking for him, so they probably won't run, they'll probably just hide. There she comes. Hey, Judy, did I get you up, hon? Yeah, you No, I'm sorry. I'm looking for Tara. Has she been here? I haven't seen Tara in a long time. Yeah. Can we no, walk through and say she's not here? not here? I promise she's Tara. I know. Come in, but okay. Here. Okay. Okay. Murray must be prepared in case the fugitive tries to escape or put up a fight. Put your hands up! But the man has nowhere to run. I need you to get dressed, Big Mike. What's going on, bro? Somebody put a warrant out on you. Who put a warrant out on you? I don't know. Who. What's the warrant on you, bro? I'm getting ready to find it. 349. Set 82. What was it for again? Probation violation. Unlawful drug uses dope playing around in here? No, bro. They'll do anything that? No, 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 no. Oh, I know. I'm sure there's stuff in here. I'm just missing it. Well, I ain't going under the wall, bro. Well, I know. You put a little weight on. So none of this paraphernalia laying over here is, your, is yours. Can you do it with two? While the suspect is taken into custody, Murray has some words of caution for the homeowner. You're responsible for everything that goes on in this house. And maintaining a dwelling where drugs are used or sold is a felony. It's not a misdemeanor. It means you go to prison, all right? It's the third time I've been out here on this kind of garbage. You're too old to be allowing this crap to be around you, and you're gonna lose your house for it. Judy, how old are you now? I'm 67. How do you know all these people that's in your house? I just know them from friends, and they don't have a place to live. Well, you might be doing this out of the kindness of your heart. That's what I'm doing. But you're letting dope dealers, drug addicts, people with warrants staying in your house. You're providing them a place to. Yeah, there's drug paraphernalia laying down there in the bedroom right now. There is? Yes. Oh, my God. So you need to clean this mess up and kick them out. Okay. And this is not a place for them to stay no more. This is this is what I will do. Okay. I will take care of it. That's the promise. All righty. Thank you, Miss Judy. Didn't find the dope, but we got the guy who was after. Only time will tell if this crash pad for drug dealers, users, and abusers will be permanently shut down. We made one arrest tonight. Every contact you make with people out here that are involved in using drugs or selling drugs that might lead us to more arrest and more information. You never know what you're gonna run up on. 